thank you, Lauren, uh, for your kind introduction, and uh, thank you the 2024 uh, COVID Information Commons hosts and uh, fellow speakers, students, and staffs. I'm going today to report our NSF-funded expedition project is a collaborative research for global pervasive computational epidemiology. I'm Judy Fox. Um, I'm working in the data science school and the computer science at the University of Virginia. A little bit of background of this project, it's a multi-institutional project led by Dr. Madhav Marenth, and he is a coordinator PI, and we have colleagues within the Virginia and Biocomplexity Institute. This is a multi-institution uh, collaboration. We have a wonderful co colleagues and researchers. It's quite an inspiring experience for me. I wanted to talk about the future. That is the exciting part about my presentation today. Imagine COVID in 2025, what will we be? We want to move from the intervention to prevention because infectious disease is a such a societal problem. By 2050, there will be projected deaths every year of over 10 million and the economic impact will be at over a hundred trillion dollars. Just a few years ago, we have came out of this pandemic, which in the US alone, we have over 1.5, 1 million people dead. And there are over a hundred million cases is almost one third of the families got infected. Much of this could have been prevented through better informed government policy. However, the COVID-19 is a complex data problem. First, we have non-stationary data coming in. It's quite difficult to learn and predict the trend with lack of data, noisy data. Making the infection forecasting understandable, explainable, can also help the decision making. They can help to identify the important geographical and the temporal focus areas so that we can signal the governments to make more effective allocation of resources to prevent the disease spread. I want to focus the rest of the talk about the research conducted in my group. We wants to interpret the county level COVID-19 infections in the US. We apply the transformer AI model, which is a type of a deep learning model used by the large language model. One of the areas we're focusing on is to ask the question, why do we need prediction? The prediction uh, using real-time data has been highlighted in 2009 by Dr. Harvey Feinberg and Dr. Elizabeth Wilson. It draws the important aspects that why it's important we want to study use the latest data to study disease control and try to observe and predict. Intervention will be the action operate at the peak point. But intervention will flatten the curve ahead of the time. We use the deep learning model is the temporal fusion transformer. And this model can forecast in real time. In our experiments, we use the past 13 days to predict the future 15 days. And the data collection comes from different multi-models we categorize them into static, covariant, and dynamic data set, like cases and deaths. But we also have some no input, such as coming Christmas and the New Year holidays. With such a model, our goal is trying to understand how to use interpretable AI to get the 
knowledge and information to where and when that the infection will happen. Which county are at the most risk? Who are the vulnerable communities that we try to help? The journey of this study is all of this with a lot of roadblocks we need to overcome. The problems comes from that, the general issue with the accuracy. How can we model, predict, so we are confident our prediction is accurate? And also when we have this prediction, how do we explain to policymakers what are the important factors post current rise of the cases? That requires us to have a deeper understanding of the data itself at a much finer grid level, like the county level characteristics. But we also want to make a decision at the real time so that its relevancy is guaranteed. It's very rich study because health disparity is not related to just people, but also is social economic impact. <laughs> We've collected over two and a half years of data set for 3,142 US counties. And we categorize, reduce the data set features from 20 to six features, two static features, the health disparity and the population age group, and the observable features, including the vaccination and the disease spread, transmissible cases and mobility. And we incorporate into known and unknown event so that we have a very complex multi-model uh, articulated AI model. Let me switch to gears to show you some of our prediction results. And we compare the TFT model with the RSTM as a basic sequence to sequence model. And we can show that in the chart on the left hand side, the TFT model performs the best and they give the error message and the accuracy is higher and the error is lower. What is the underpin of understanding for interpretable AI? This comes from the attention mechanism using an encoder decoder architecture. And the attention mechanism is the underpin of the current large language model, including chat GBT. Because we have this multi-head attention mechanism can capture the context of the disease with the times going by. And so that will refine the space. We will look at the feature and the cause and the effect. So we can focus the importance to the spatial and the temporal patterns with the hotspot areas. On the right hand side, you can see the architecture of a TFT model we input the past features and try to predict the future happening. In this case, it's the cases of infection. And the encapsulate embedding the features, especially the static feature, into using sequences model to capture the dependable patterns. And we propagate all these patterns to self-attention to try to mask out uh, interpretable multi-head attention so that we can focus on the important patterns and areas. This forecasting model in, is able to provide us with the cyclic pattern, which is the reporting of the COVID cases, but also special time event like holidays, like weekends, you can clearly label them like in this chart. On the right hand side, we can even look backwards, which period of time has the most impact of the future prediction in the time frame from zero to 13 days. Here is the chart of the trend. We can predict and choosing the top 100 largest counties. You can see that we have the prediction compared with the grand truths. Further, we can compare that a smaller population uh, counties, you can see the results matches much better, has less spikes. 
uh, and the differentiate different values. How about the location information? This chart shows on the left hand side is the self intention of the AI model can capture the intensity at the county level. This is not possible if our data is at the state level. On the right hand side is the data cumulative cases from CDC of all over 3,000 US counties. If you look at these two results, you can see uh, the correlation between these two data set and the result. We measured the correlation and conclude that we can interpret the AI model by capture the self-attention weights at the county level. And so strong correlation with the model behavior versus that the prediction of the cases compared to the ground truth. R2 provide the information that policymakers need. We believe a small reduction in the hotspot transmission can lead to a large reduction in infections, especially in the early stage. Real-time forecasting and focusing our attention on the most important regions in daily infection is crucial. We have a fine-grained method to capture these infections at the county level that would significantly reduce the risk. There are many future works we can do coupled with this existing result. We can explore many social, economic impact and disparities for the future work. At UEA, we started the AI for Science program and attracted over 3,000 undergraduates to participate. And we selected a dozen students involved into our project. We want to study further the population age group sensitivity using Morris-based index study to know that each population groups who are most vulnerable of COVID infections. We choose the type series deep learning model because the attention mechanism, as Apple mentioned, can give our insight and understand how the model is predicted. There are several lessons we learned from this journey. Infectious disease has been a social, economic, global-wise problem, impact the public health and the economic at such a large scale. From the COVID-19 pandemic, our first lesson learned is that testing is vital in understanding the pandemic progress. The second is that a lot of these infections are very different in different smaller regions, and the situation is quite dynamic. The better way to address this in policy is adapted to the local level. There are many ways we can improve, including that we build the tools like we uh, studied to accurately predict the COVID infection and the future infectious disease. That will help the policymaker to intervene in a science-based manner. Intervention is the future. We wanted to prepare ready for the future crisis such as the pandemic. Before I wrap it up, I really want to share with everyone that we need to build the trust if there's any lesson learned from the past pandemic. We want to improve the explanation to the public, to experts, to the policymakers, what is happening and how we can leverage the policy to impact. And we want to have an interpretable method to quantifiably model and evaluate our method. And we also want to explain our model behavior and AI-based predictions to non-experts, including all the public and students. Collectively, we hope to build a future so that we're ready for the future events. With that, 
I want to thank you everyone for uh, participating in today's uh, workshop. And I provide some of our work at here. And please feel free to contact me. I look forward to future discussions at the end of this workshop. Thank you.